In this video, we will look at a few examples that will allow us to practice working with alternate interior angles. In example A, it says find the measure of angle 1, which is right here. One thing I notice in this picture is that the lines are marked as being parallel. This will mean that the, any alternate interior angles have to be congruent, because if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Angle 1 is an alternate interior angle with the 115 degree angle. That means because the lines are parallel, angle 1 also has to be 115 degrees. So our answer is the measure of angle 1 equals 115 degrees. In example B, it says find the measure of the angle and x. So again, we have two lines marked as being parallel and a transversal that crosses them in the middle. And in this picture, the two angles that we're looking at are alternate interior angles because they're on the inside of the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So that means this angle over here has to be 58 degrees because alternate interior angles are congruent when lines are parallel. So the measure of the angle is 58 degrees. Now in order to find x, we can just solve this equation. 4x minus 10, which is the expression for the angle, has to equal 58 degrees. We can solve this using normal algebra skills. Add 10 to both sides and you get 4x equals 68 degrees. Then we can divide by 4, and we get our answer that x equals 17 degrees. All right, let's go on to the last example. In this one, it says prove the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. So that means we're given L and M, those lines, and a transversal T, and we're given two angles are congruent, so angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. And we're trying to prove that L has to be or parallel to line M. So let's set up our two-column proof with our statements and reasons in order to complete this. So statements go on the left, and reasons are on the right. And remember, we're going to start with our givens, and our two givens are that L and M and transversal T are marked in our picture. And also, angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. And both of these, the reasons I know both of these things is that it was given. Now, because angle 3 and angle 2 are vertical angles, these two angles have to be congruent. So that's the next thing I'm going to say. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 2 because of the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are always congruent. Now, I notice that both angle 2 and angle 6 are marked or are written as being congruent to angle 3. So by the transitive property, that means angle 2 must be also congruent to angle 6. Since both of these angles are congruent to angle 3, they must be congruent to each other. So that's the transitive property of congruence. So now that I know that angle 2 and angle 6 are congruent, those angles are corresponding angles. And any time you have corresponding angles are congruent, we know that the two lines have to be parallel. So we're ready for our last step, which is to say what we're trying to prove. L is parallel to M because of the converse of the corresponding angles postulate, which says that two lines are parallel if corresponding angles are congruent. So here we've proved the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. We've proved that if two alternate interior angles are congruent, then lines have to be parallel. And the main 
thing we used to do this was corresponding angles.